My name is Paige Osborne and I'm going to cover the Guides to Speech in Action. At the Associated Students Child Development Lab, we follow and practice the Guides to Speech in Action developed by Katherine Reed Baker on a daily basis in the classroom and lab environment. During your initial orientation at the lab, you will receive a copy of the Guides to Speech in Action comprised of 15 key points. The AS Child Development Lab director and staff have identified several guides which I will highlight for you. The guides have been excerpted with personal permission from Reed's book, The Nursery School. Katherine Reed Baker is well known in the field of child development. A little known fact about Ms. Baker is that she actually had a Chico connection. And because of this connection, she came to CSU Chico and was the anchor for a conference that generated enough money to fund a scholarship for child development at CSU Chico and Butte. The guides to speech in action have been successfully used as guidance techniques in our program for over 35 years. At the AS Child Development Lab, we believe the following to be the first and most important guides. The health and safety of the children and staff are a primary concern at all times. As Baker states, the skillful teacher never relaxes watchfulness for things that affect the health and safety of children, meaning the health and safety of all present at the lab is always at the forefront. It is also extremely important to always be alert to the total situation. Always try to position yourself in the classroom environment so that you have the most global view. Consider having your back to the walls or fences to maximize your ability to observe as much of the environment as possible. Even when adult to child ratio may be low or we are extremely busy trying to meet children's needs while following through on multiple classroom activities, we are always striving to be alert to the entire situation. So remember, be healthy, safe, and stay alert. Next, we encourage you to state suggestions or directions in a positive rather than a negative form. A positive suggestion is one which tells a child what he can do. When we do this, we are making suggestions that will encourage independence and positive choice making. For example, remind a child about washing your hands by saying, you can come sit down for lunch after you wash your hands, instead of saying, you can't have lunch because you haven't washed your hands. Or, instead of saying, you can't paint with watercolors until you clean up those blocks, consider saying, let's pick up those blocks together, then you can go paint with the watercolors. Putting suggestions or directions positively also represents a step in developing a more positive attitude towards children's behavior inside ourselves. Another way to consider your speech is to think about your voice as a teaching tool. As Baker states, you can use words and a tone of voice which will help the child feel confident and reassured. It may be necessary to speak firmly, but it's never necessary to raise one's voice. Sometimes we state something to a child more than once, but we never need to yell it the second time. The most effective speech is simple, direct, and slow. It is always better to move near to the person to whom you are speaking, rather than to call or shout across any play area. Your words will get a better reception if they are spoken quietly and face to face. At the AS Child Development Lab, we work to redirect children by suggesting an activity that is related to her purpose or interest whenever possible. Try to honor the impulse behind the behavior. For example, encourage children to throw balls instead of sand. If a child begins painting on walls or floor, remind her to paint on the paper. Or when ch children are climbing on furniture in the classroom, invite them to climb on the playground equipment instead. And be sure to never use your speech and language to change behavior by methods that may lead to loss of self-respect, such as shaming a child or labeling their behavior as bad, mean, rude, or selfish. So remember, use your speech and language to encourage children in what they can do. Next, I will highlight ways to guide your actions with children. At the AS Child Development Lab, we avoid making models in any art medium for children to copy. Art is valuable because it is a means of self-expression. The young child needs avenues of expression which models may prevent. We want to encourage children's creativity and not confine them to copy or imitate. For example, when asked at the art table to make a tree by a child, encourage the child to make his own tree by asking, what do you need to make a tree? Or, how would you draw a tree? and then support the child in his endeavor. Another action we try to take is forestalling. 
Forestalling is an effective way of handling problems. Learn to foresee and prevent rather than to mop up afterwards. As I discussed at the beginning, staying alert to the total situation is a good way of preventing the escalation of problems. Working with children to solve problems is another way of forestalling escalation. For example, when two children want to be the mom in a dramatic play scenario, guiding them to discover they can both be moms and take their children to the park is a way of helping them solve their problem before it escalates. Remember, work to have a global view and foresight so that problems can become learning opportunities and not involve serious consequences. Finally, we want to offer children as many yeses as possible. Sometimes limits are necessary, in which case they should be clearly defined and consistent. Of course, taking into consideration children's individual needs and their developmental level. In a well-planned environment, there will not be many no's, and when there are no's, they will be clearly defined and the child will understand them. Children will feel most secure with adults who believe in their strengths and abilities and who work to keep them safe. The guides to speech and action given to us by Katherine Reed Baker are just that, guides. As you begin your work and participation with children and staff at the AS Child Development Lab, we want you to recognize your own strengths as well as the strengths and the skills of the children. Being familiar with and practicing the guides to speech and action is a good way of doing this. So remember, state suggestions and directions positively, use your voice as a teaching tool, redirect children when possible based upon honoring their impulses and interests, help children change behavior in ways that enhances their self-respect, develop a global view and foresee and forestall, always encourage children in what they can do, and always work to stay healthy, safe, and alert. Thank you for your time.